Welcome to this short video on copyright law and public domain. First of all, congratulations on taking the first steps to learn about copyright and public domain. This video is helpful in learning some of the basics as you think about copyright law and how it affects you and the content you interact with. Copyright law grants a set of exclusive rights to creators, which means that no one else can copy, distribute, perform, adapt, or otherwise use your materials. This gives creators the means to control their works, which incentivize them to create new works. It's important to note here that copyright does not apply to facts or ideas themselves. They only apply to the expression of those facts or ideas. So you can't exactly copyright that original tune in your head until you give it form as a written item or as recorded notes. There are two primary purposes for copyright law. First is utilitarian, which encourages creators to create new items. And second is author's rights, which ensures that a copy copyrighted work is attributed to the original author and preserves the integrity of that creative item. As a general rule, copyright is automatically applied to the work the moment it has been fixed in a tangible medium. That means that you don't have to go through the process of registering your work for copyright to become a copyright holder. It simply automatically happens. Creators who utilize copyright get exclusive rights to control certain uses of their works by others, such as making authorized translations, making copies for public performances, and adaptations. In the realm of exclusive rights, it's important to know that moral rights and similar and related rights are very important to keep in mind. So moral rights can be seen in many international copyright laws and includes the right of the author to be recognized for their work and the right to protect the work's integrity. Moral rights last indefinitely. Similar and related rights vary by country to country, but they are essentially designed to give some copyright-like rights to those who are not themselves the author, but are involved in communicating the work to the public, such as broadcasters and performers of a particular work that may be copyright that might be copyrighted by another person. But how can copyright protect the rights of content consumers and the greater public? Exceptions like fair use and fair dealing were designed to ensure that the rights of the public were not restricted by copyright. In the US, fair use is determined by four factors. First is the purpose and character of your use. Second is the nature of the copyrighted work. Three is the amount, of sustain the amount and sustainability of the portion taken. And number four is the effect of the use upon the potential market. Whatever you are using a particular copyrighted item for, it cannot negatively affect the original copyright owner. So fair use and fair dealing provides guidelines for users to use any copyrighted work in a fair manner that does not infringe on the right of the copy holder. But what about works that are not put under the copyright umbrella? This is where public domain comes in. The public domain contains materials the public can use to create new materials without having to jump through permissions or loopholes. Materials enter public domain in one of four ways, either an expired copyright, the work was never copyrighted, such as purely functional works or official legislative texts, the creator dedicated the work to public domain, or four, the copyright holder failed to acquire or maintain their copyright. With public domain works, the sky is the limit in regards to what you can do with them. And while it is no longer leg legally required, users are encouraged to identify and give credit to the original owner. It's also important to still check on any other protections a work may still have even when the copyright is expired such as trademark protection or other country-specific limitations. The information in this video was collected through the work curated by the Creative Commons organization. Please learn more at their website, www.creativecommons.org.